Previously on Sailing Avocet. After eight days in Clipper Cove, we pulled our hook from the muddy bottom and headed towards our next anchorage. We're coming into Angel Island to meet up with our friends. We're actually going to raft up because it's cheaper. So we're gonna grab a mooring with them and explore this new spot. There's our friends. Just like in Clipper Cove, we navigated around a handful of shoals to reach Ayala Cove Mooring Field, where we rendezvoused with our friends Corey and Lucy aboard Chalet Mare. Even though the boats look like the best of friends tied together, the ferry wakes would turn them into bumper boats, inspiring us to pick up our own mooring. After all, $30 is a small price to pay for a good night's sleep and peace of mind that our paint would remain on our own boat. Once we detached from Chalet Mare, Corey escorted us to our very own mooring set. The moorings are all first come, first served, and are a bow and stern tie setup, which can be a challenge, especially if the mooring field is crowded or if there is heavy wind or current. Each set of balls are color-coded, so yellow goes to yellow and red goes to red. Once settled, we loaded up our dinghy and headed to shore to stretch our legs. Angel Island is the largest natural island in the San Francisco Bay and offers some of the best views of the surrounding cities. With great outdoor recreation activities readily available, the island is truly a hidden gem amidst the urban Bay Area. So we really wanted to speak with a park ranger or Angel Island representative for our video, but unfortunately, since it is a state park, only one person is qualified to do so and they live on the mainland. Fortunately, Angel Island has these free pamphlets filled with wonderful history as well as a map so you don't get lost and they have great interpret signs all over the island. So let's get right into it. Beginning with the earliest inhabitants, the Coast Milwaukee, Angel Island was a seasonal hunting and gathering location for the native tribes and later a safe refuge and supply stop for Spanish explorers such as Juan Manuel de Ayala, who sailed through the gate in 1775 aboard the San Carlos, the first known ship in the San Francisco Bay. Ayala anchored this vessel in the cove of the island he named Isla de Los Angeles, or Angel Island, and from here directed the first survey of the bay. Dating back to the Civil War, the island has nearly 100 years of military history. With the outbreaks of World War I and II, troops both returning and embarking for conflicts were processed through Angel Island, as well as quarantined and treated in the various hospitals. Despite its long military legacy, Angel Island's claim to fame is rather nefarious. Known as the Ellis Island of the West, Angel Island was home to an immigration station that detained over 300,000 Asian immigrants, mostly from China, between 1910 and 1940. The living conditions were brutal, and many immigrants were exposed to disease in addition to their long interrogations that reflected the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. Many immigrants described their time on the island as a hellscape. In 1940, a fire destroyed the main administration building, and the processing of immigrants was relocated to the mainland. But after the bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, and the outbreak of World War II, the abandoned immigration station was turned into a prisoner of war processing facility. The island saw its last military service as home to a Nike missile base and began the transition into a California state park in the mid-50s, starting with Ayala Cove. In the early 60s, the final departure of the military allowed the rest of Angel Island to become the parklands we get to explore today. So we are walking on the Northridge Trail. It is a very mild hike, I would say. Obviously, we're still in basically flip-flops and it's pretty mellow grade, so nothing too gnarly. Beautiful views of the boat, the water, the city front and then just nature all around us. It's very cool to be in this little pocket of paradise. And it's like a million degrees over here because it's shaded from the wind. So I'm dying, but we're almost at the top and then we'll show you the view. <laughs> The 
Animal life is wonderfully diverse on the island, with both land and seashore species to be seen. Seals and sea lions frequent the waters while deer and raccoons live on land. But what is perhaps the most interesting animal fact of all is that there are no squirrels, rabbits, skunks, or rattlesnakes on the island. It's funny, when we started our hike today, we did not plan on hiking all the way to the top of Angel Island, but here we are at the top. The peak of Mount Livermore is 788 feet tall and has the perfect 360 degree view of the entire Bay Area. The name of the peak comes from Caroline Livermore, a conservationalist whose efforts in protecting the island led to Angel Island becoming a state park enjoyed by tens and thousands of visitors every year. mountain bike tomorrow? We are. We don't get to mountain bike this though because it's off limit for off limits for bikes. But we are is going to Is it actually to, though? It is. And we are rule followers. We're setting a good example. So we are going to go on the bike trail, which also looks fun. A little less fun, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Back on shore, we join Corey and Lucy to play frisbee and watch the sunset over our boats in the mooring field. So, Angel Island is a very bikeable island. They do have a dedicated bike trail, so you can't go on all of the trails with your bike, but um, it's still a really fun time, or at least we think it's going to be. It's about the same size as what folding bikes would be. Oh. All right, we're leaving Avocet. Going for a bike ride. It's not a lot of space in here, but uh, we make it work. The fatty, the fatty sucks it all up nicely. Press it. How do you like the trail so far? Not bad. Not too many hills. We're in the out. We're in the wilderness again. Crazy that San Francisco is like right over there. This is a beautiful trail. Not as nice as the single track we saw yesterday, but it's all right. So basically, the bike trail on Angel Island is a paved fire road that goes all the way around the island. Uh, it's really nice because you get a nice, beautiful view of the ocean, and you get basically on the same um, level as all the buildings. So right now we're coming up to a building. I don't know what it is, but it's old. We're gonna check it out. But uh, don't expect to do any single track or anything like that. That is all preserved for hikers only. I fibbed. There is some single track. Let's see what this trail's made of. Apparently that's an old hospital back and this was an army base. So that's haunted, haunted, definitely haunted. Right below the hospital is West Garrison, the infantry camp that served as a depot for recruits and a staging area for troops serving in various campaigns. Below the officer's quarters that doubled as my dream home were identical white houses that were also officer quarters with construction dating back to 1864. At the base of the hill, we inspected the large brick building, which we later learned was the orderly room, with broken windows and nothing but darkness inside. Honestly, it made our skin crawl, so we rode our bikes over to the small spit of beach right beneath one of the many batteries on the island, where we unfortunately found a seashore full of trash and treasures like this salty little teddy. As we continued along the perimeter trail, we came across another battery on the west side, that had a pretty sweet trail that didn't technically say no bikes. So naturally, I sent it. So 
this right here is an old Civil War battery that was made as the last line of defense during the Civil War. Um, guns that were mounted on top of this big concrete fortress uh, were able to shoot about 20 miles. Right after the Civil War, things kind of fell into disrepair, obviously, because they were no longer needed. And um, uh, they were rebuilt in the Spanish-American War. So this is crazy. Crazy how like in good of shape this is still. It's right where a giant gun used to be mounted. Obviously, could fire straight out to the gate for any ships that were coming in. Pretty wild. What do you think about this place? Um, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> it's actually really creepy, but it's cool in a creepy way. Lots of history all around. It's, it's very neat to see these buildings still here and well preserved, so people like us can enjoy them and learn from the past. So and free. And it's free-ish. We pay, we paid thirty dollars for mooring, yeah. but it's, it's free. free -ish. bases here. This is basically where the military would come to have fun because you're on an island, you can't really, you know, get out and enjoy the city if you're stationed here. So they have a concert hall, they have a chapel, a library. Gambling. Um, gambling. Some of these buildings are still in use, like that one right there. But a lot of these have fallen in disrepair. And um, spooky. Home to ghosts. Yeah, pretty scary looking. It's another uh, hospital. We are in an old 1911 era hospital. Converted into uh, a military barracks in World War II, but it's open, at least the first floor is open for people to come in still, which is kind of crazy because this place is falling apart. Pretty wild. What's creepy is all of the writing that's on the walls from people who have defaced the property recently. As we rounded the island, we finally arrived at the infamous immigration station, where we locked our bikes outside the gate and walked in quietly to not disturb the deer that feasted on shrubbery nearby. The fire in 1940 may have burned down the administration building, but there is still 14.3 acres to explore, including the beach, outdoor exhibits, and the two museums at the site, the barracks and the hospital. This right behind me is China Cove. It is a free anchorage on Angel Island. It's one of the most protected uh, in the bay actually and uh, a lot of people like it so we might come back here to set the hook depending on what the situation is when we get back to the boat we're either going to pay for another night or move um, later today so we're going to fill it out when we get back to the boat although rather spooky chris and i enjoyed touring the hospital museum which was not only free but also vastly fascinating sharing the details of common treatments past medical practices and even how architecture played a role in wellness in each ward, the walls were crowned by a coved ceiling, which at the time was thought to be beneficial for expelling disease from rooms. We were the only two living souls in the museum, and the silence was overwhelming as we stood in the operating room that overlooked China Cove. If the walls could talk, these would scream. I find it admirable how the Park Service was able to transform this place of pain and suffering into a monument and museum that doesn't hide from the past, but embraces it, allowing visitors to learn from the mistakes that were made. You can check out the exhibits on the island's website, free of charge, for more details on the history of Angel Island Immigration Station and its part in Pacific Immigration. Overall, Angel Island is amazing if you are looking for some nature, some history, and just some good times in the outdoors. You're so close to the city, yet this still feels like it's a world away. So if you ever have the chance, definitely make it over here. You won't regret it.
Friday. We're leaving and it is getting busy in here. Before we left, we asked the park ranger if we could tie up to the day use dock to refill our water tanks. It was tight quarter maneuvering with the incoming tide pushing Avocet into the pilings. But Marissa handled it and we navigated through the shoals, making our way to Raccoon Straits. Next on Sailing Avocet. 